All right, here's another training tape. This one focuses mainly on, um, well, solely on illegal blocks, uh, not including holding. That'll be a tape of itself. This one, uh, I think we have you know, probably around 20 plays. Uh, most deal with illegal blocks in the back and blind sign blocks, but we do have a few blocks below the waist and chop block and one chop block play to show on here. Uh, before I get into illegal blocks in the back, uh, let's talk a little bit about chase mode. Chase mode is when a uh, a player who is trying to make a tackle beats the person that he's blocking him, that's trying to block him, and that block blocker is chasing that uh, player trying to make a play. So in, in instances like that, in in players who are in chase mode, any force to the back, whether if there's a side combo component, we we put it on the back because uh, a slight push in the back, can, it's a, it doesn't take much force to push that defender past the runner or past them the point of attack. So I'll be using that term chase mode uh, a little bit when I'm talking about illegal blocks in the black. When we get in the blind side box, we'll talk about players who come parallel or back towards the line of scrimmage. Those are the ones who should uh, get, we should have our antennas up and um, We'll we'll just start from here. But uh, here, this first play is a simple uh, punt play, right? So we know the field judge, side judge have the widest guys who we call the flyers. So let's take a look at the bottom of the screen here. And I'll circle the two players that we're looking at right here. And watch as the, the, the so right here, I'm sorry, let me back it up a little bit. Right here, the gunner beats the defender. So the, the, uh, def, uh, the, He's trying to block him. He is in chase mode. Okay, so any slight shove to the back here, um, we we would want to call for uh, an illegal block in the back. Now, there's always caveats here. If there's a slight shove and the the punt returner makes a fair catch, we're going to talk to that that gunner. However, if that slight push causes this defender to go face first onto the ground, we're not going to ignore that. Even if there is a even if there is a touchback or a fair catch because that uh we can't allow players just to get shoved to the ground like that okay and this play you'll see there is a shove in the back right here right so that that's what i would call you know we have a shove in the back right here it's hanging right if he makes a clean catch we're okay if he if he makes a clean catch that's a fair catch we can keep the flag in our pocket okay but if he makes the catch and goes up field, that's where we want to have the, our flag down. So if he makes the catch, we'd have our flag down. But the important part to note is it's still during the kick. So when reporting our foul to the referee, we would tell him or her, during the kick, I have an illegal block in the back. Because a kick is a kick until the, there is possession by the return team. In this case, you'll see the ball, ball is bouncing on the ground and it goes towards the the goal line here now this this situation i i'm sure some some players or some i'm sorry some officials would say you know what i'm going to pass on this block in the back because it doesn't doesn't have effect on the play but we, we really can't say that because he shoves him in the back which knocks him off his line and you can see he stumbles a little bit and and doesn't have an opportunity to go back and try and prevent the kick from going in the end zone so in this case, I, I, I would fully support an official who would throw a block in the back on this case. And, you know, the coach says to me, you know, hey, it had no effect on the play. Well, it, it knocked the uh, gunner off his route to try to prevent the, the touchback. So, you know, we talked a little bit about chase mode on this play. There is a shove in the back and it doesn't, not so much, but you can see it does knock the defender off his stride and knocks him off where he wants to go. So uh, this would be a case would I would like to see a block in the back. Um, th this next play, we're going to look at the, the action around, the, I think it's the 40 yard line where, uh, we're going to see something happen here. Another, again, another kick play here, right? So here are, we have two instances right here, chase mode, chase mode, right? So what do we know here? Chase mode, any push in the back, right? So look around the 40-yard line here. And this is where we, we cannot rest, right? We're, we're, we're watching this guy who's coming sideways. And, you know, we talked a little bit about coming sideways later on in this film about blindside blocks. 
And so I'm, I'm not sure if it's the field judge or side judge. I, I'll see the sticks at the top of the screen. So the field judge right now is officiating the catch and anything that's going around here, right? This is where the, the line judge who's back here in good position, I don't see him or her, should be looking up field and, and having our antennas go up because, hey, there's there could be a potential with a player running sideways or parallel to the line of scrimmage. So if we run this a little bit further, we could see that there's that nice, powerful hit there, right? He comes from the side, and I know we'll talk about blindside blocks later on, but this is not a block in the back because he gets him in the side. This could be blindside block with targeting. Okay, watch watch the way the uh, defender dips his head. Crown, helmet to helmet, crown of the helmet right there. Knocks the defender clear to the ground. There's no leading with the hands. There's no... Uh, you know, just standing there like they're setting a basketball pick. This is a punishing hit with forcible contact right there. So uh, th that's a situation where it's not a block in the back. However, we have a, an illegal blindside block. And what is great about this, I don't know if you can see this here, but watch the umpire back here. The umpire is not just doing nothing because nothing happens. He sees that, boom, throws it right in there. That's just excellent officiating by that umpire. He's not ball watching he is looking for a threat he sees that happening and and makes the call right there so that's just wonderful officiating here um next this one's a little bit of a difficult play in six man mechanics um th this this action this block in the back happens in the middle of the field and it's it's again it's just it's a difficult play we're going to look at, at this guy right here and watch what he does So he, he overruns the play a little bit, right? So we have a screen and we have a linebacker who's scraping this way. And whenever you have a lineman, I believe this is a lineman. Yeah, this is a tackle. They're not as quick as the linebackers or DBs. So, so when you have big on small like that, we got to keep an eye on it because these guys are a lot quicker, a lot more agile, and it causes linemen to overrun plays, maybe reach and grab and pull. Or in this instance, totally whiff and hit him in the back, right? So the guy cuts back up inside. He's scraping. And he gets hit right in the back. And, you know, I, I can see the umpire. He's watching this action right here. But as he opens up, maybe we can pick it up here. Uh, it's a little bit difficult. Again, we have, uh, if, you're a, if you're a good head linesman or line judge, I know... We like to officiate the catch there because we're we're worried about catch bobble. But as you become more comfortable with that catch, you can actually feel that 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 pass is forward and not have to officiate it because you know if the ball's laying on the ground, you also have the referees who who is on this right side who can help you officiate that catch. And you can maybe possibly look your eyes downfield to catch a little bit of this action. But again, I'm telling you, this is this is a difficult play to get in six man mechanics. And in, in seven man, when you work uh, state playoff games or you, you have a fortune to move up to small college, you'll have a back judge probably looking right in that area who would, who would catch that action. But in six man, it, it, it's kind of a hole in our coverage. But, uh, you know, as, as we become more comfortable and uh, open up our vision, we will see actions like this that are blocks in the back right there. Okay, and we'll see it a little bit on this uh, on this end zone view here. You see him just, you know, plant them into numbers. I'll rewind it up back one more time right in here. So you see what I'm talking about right there. So this next play, play 65, we're, we're looking, so we have another screen pass here, right? Again, big, small, quicker, slower. Hits him right in the back, right? Number, number 21 in the blue is trying to make a play. And number 66 smokes him in the back. This is one that opens up a little bit more because this line judge at the top of the screen don't, you know, feel the catch. You know, I, I, I say this knowing I don't, there's no instant replay in high school and you, you all get a little bit nervous. But again, if you become more aware that the referees on your side can help you officiate that catch or if it hits the ground or skips, you can just start peeking your eyes upfield to where all the, uh, the, risk of a foul is going to happen 
and you're going to be able to catch that little ping right in the back, right at the point of attack. And it's it's big because look at the look at how it springs the runner for a touchdown. So um, you know, it's it's difficult to be a line of scrimmage official, but you know that's why that's why I think we're the they're the best officials on the field. So this next one is right at the point of attack. Okay, let's see if I can slow it down. Number six right here, six in blue, and we don't we don't catch a real good view of this. But you'll you can see number six just face plants, not face plants. But you can see the action by the def the defender right at the point of attack. Stops, tries to plant, totally gets knocked off, and we have a runner. This opens up fully to two people, the line judge and the referees. And referees, this is where I I've stressed a few times in some of my other tapes. Don't just plant yourself in the middle of the field. As the runner starts working up a sideline, work over behind the runner because it'll give you a view right up the chute. And if this referee had just shuffled over just a few yards, I, I would guarantee you he would have saw this block right at the point of attack and thrown his flag down for a legal block in the back. All right, next we're looking at, a, uh, again, another punt play. Let's, uh, let's, let's see what happens here. The action that happens here is around the 45-yard line. So again, we have a punt. And this is where our dead ball officiating occurs. And this, this is a seven-man mechanics game. This is a state playoff game. But again, line judge at the bottom of the screen, or at the top of the screen. Watch what happens here. Because we have a back judge looking, because we have a point. We have a field judge who is watching the ball to see if we may possibly have first touching. Umpire could possibly spin and catch this, but watch what happens. Watch what number 17 does right here. Knocks him right to the ground. It's totally unwarranted and not a part of our game. It's just a player that's not really in the play, just gets planted right on his face. Um, if you so would call it an unnecessary roughness foul, that's, that's not bad, but you know we'd want this as a block in the back. Like at, at minimum, this is a block in the back because it, it's just not it's not good for the game here. Uh, mechanically speaking, uh, I'd like to say that field judge, side judge, be back a little bit further. This spot right here is irrelevant. Back judge, you should also be back a little bit for, further to see on a forty-five degree angle. Don't be so in such a hustle to to be parallel with the ball because when you're parallel with the ball, you only see this when you're. Um, erase the lines. If you're back here where I have the things drawn, you see all of this. Same with the back judge. It, it just helps your field of vision. It helps you see more things on the play here. All right. Th this play is at the top of the screen. This is this is a good no call here for a block in the back, and, I, and I'll show you why. So again, do we have chase mode? Yes, we have chase mode. So watch what happens here. We have another screen pass where we have this little bubble screen, and this makes it a little bit difficult, more difficult for this line of scrimmage official to officiate what's about to happen here, because do we have a forward pass? Do we have a backwards pass? Okay, this is where if, if you have good crew communication and you have trips to the top of the screen and the, the head linesman who's at the top of the screen should trust the line judge at the bottom of the screen when, whenever a play happens this way to judge whether the pass is forward or backwards so that you can have that confidence to look at your keys who are number two and number three right here as the headlines. Okay, so right now, as a headlinesman, you see your one key is not going to be threatened. Your other key is coming out here. And uh, side judge, this is your key here who looks like he's setting up the block, right? So now he's in chase mode. Antenna's up, right? Chase mode. He's got beaten. He took a horrible angle, right? If he was good, he would have took a flatter angle to get in front, but he he just chose to go upfield a little bit too much, not get that angle. But what he doesn't do is there's no push in the back. So this is where good crew communication comes in, and this is where you can help. Because the side judge is so far back, he may, he or she may not see that there is no push in the back here. So this is where the head linesman can save the crew and say, 
and it doesn't happen on this play, but if the side judge does throw a block in the back because he or she guesses, this is where the head linesman comes in and says, hey, you know what? There was no contact. The defender just fell on his own. Okay, so again, this is where we can have good crew and we, we want to have good crew communication here because a lot of times we see more than one person sees a potential foul happen. So if you see your if you see your side judge or somebody else throw that flag and you're a wing official, don't be afraid to step up and uh, and save the crew. Next play, we're going to look at the left guard on the linebacker. Again, big on small, right? Left guard, I think it's this this player right here. Watch what happens here. Number, oh, I'm sorry, it's the right guard. Is it? No, it, it's 59, I'm sorry. I was right the first, it's the center. Okay, I'm sorry for all that. So 59 goes out to the second level, misses. Oh, it is 53. So 59, in, he, he takes a bad angle, he gets beat. If my telestrations can work better here. So right here, he's going after number 39 on the red team. He misses, but he gets him from the side. But this is where you have to judge here. Does this side push push him in the area where this guard is moving upfield? In this case, I don't think it's the case. And what we have is that number 59 then plants number 39 in the back, and the umpire gets a flag for a block below the waist. The only thing I would just be careful with on situations like this and, and the umpire here or anybody is make sure you see the whole play. Make sure you make sure that he doesn't shove him in his path, causing the block in the back to happen inadvertently. Okay. In this case, it doesn't, you know, 59 makes an act, blocks him in the back, and we then we have a good call for a block in the back. All right, here uh, we're going to finish up with uh, uh, another a good no call here. Okay, another screen pass play. And what I like here is watch the uh watch the headlines at the top of the screen. He gets up he gets behind the play to help him officiate the action. Right? Because now he can officiate the catch and the blo potential block in the back by number 54 that could be happening right here. His eyes are right exactly where we want them. He knows, he trusts his field judge, side judge, or side judge in this case, to have that block and to help with this block. Uh, mechanically speaking, side judges, I'd like you back further where my X is. Okay, standing on the pylon is just going to get you to move back whenever the most important part of the play happens. Okay, so number 54. Now, this is it's a tough one. He's, number 12 is scraping sideways. Is there a shove in the back? There might be a slight shove, and if there is a slight, if there is contact here, and again, we don't have great film, if there's any contact in the back, in this case, because he is in chase mode right here, this would be a foul for a block in the back. If 54 and white whiffs on him, then we don't have a foul for a block in the back. Okay, I just wanted to show, talk to us mechanically speaking. You don't see anything on the end zone. So next we're going to move to... Blindside blocks. And the first play is a doozy. We have three of them on it. Okay? So the first one happens around the 28-yard line on a kickoff return. So the first one happens. We have a, this player who is moving, and I talked about this earlier, on situation on kicks plays, on screen plays, or even on long runs, players that are moving parallel to the line of scrimmage, and in this case, we're talking the free kick line, or back towards the ball carrier, are ones we got to watch. And if I'm the I'm the uh, line judge at the bottom of the screen, this this person is catching my eye because watch what he does right at the point of attack, forcible contact right there, and that's the blindside block that we get here, right? So let's let's take a look at the next blindside block around the 30 yard line. I'm sorry, at the 40 yard line. So um, let's see.
There's the one at the 28. Now, behind the play. What do we think about this block right here? And this is where we cannot go to sleep. That's forcible contact from the side. And it's, it's look, let's take a look at the runner here when this happens. The runner's five yards ahead. We can't say he's out of the play. But again, if in this case, it, however, in this case, it looks like it's a shove of the hands. Now, it's, if his shoulder gets into him before the hands, then it is that then we don't put hands into the equation. And the block I'm talking about is right here. Looks like shoulder, then a shove. That is another case of an illegal blindside block. So there's number two. They're both on the kicking team. I mean, I'm sorry, on the receiving team. Next one we're going to look at right here. Another one. Do we have another one by the kicking team? No, because why? The member of the kicking team sees it. I'm sorry. So that is not a blindside block. Now, finally, right around the pile. This guy's mad. They're going to return it for a touchdown, he thinks. What do you think about that block? I don't think we have anything there. Two reasons. They see each other. But I just put that on there because we can have a, an elite. We, it's not just on the receiving team that can a legal blindside block. The kicking team can't. If this, if this guy were to get all ticked off and hit him and this player right here didn't see him and there was forcible contact, you could call that on the kicking team here. But it's a, that one's a good no call right there. All right, here's another um, same game. Uh, good no call, but I think we get lucky on this play, and I'll show you why. We're going to look at the bottom of the screen. And it's another player right here moving parallel. Look at the, so our eyes of our side judges down are downfield. The defender sees it coming, but I don't think we ever see that hit. And, And I understand why the side judge is looking downfield because their keys are looking downfield. But if I'm not mistaken, we're keying the kicking team here. So our eyes should still be in this area right here, watching these players going down. So we should have been able to see this. And you see, Al, how the side judge is moving downfield. Be patient, side judges. We're moving downfield. I'm sorry, field judges. I think the sticks are at the top of the screen, so excuse me. Be patient, field judges. There's nothing wrong with just turning and looking right here. And as they get down deeper, then take a couple steps downfield to look. Okay, but there's another instance of a legal hit. It wasn't blindside. Um, so there's another good no call. Look in the backfield, number eight on number 40. Looks like from the side, it is. It's not real forcible. I mean, it's a hit. 40 doesn't go down on the ground. Um, again, it's a good no call by the referee there. Now, what do we think about number the hit? Let's look at the hit on number 11 right here. And these are all just what we go through in a normal play, right? Is it forcible? Possibly, but it doesn't really doesn't really uh, affect the play that much, and I don't I don't think it's that forcible. I think it's more of a graze to where uh, four spins right out of it. But uh, if you're wondering, yes, this is a horse collar tackle that should have been called at the end of the play. All right, what can we do to a receiver? Watch what happens to this receiver. We can block a receiver from the front if we're a defender, but can we block him from the side or back? No. Watch what happens here. Shove right into the back to the ground. I know the play didn't go in that area, 
but we can't allow defenders just to do this. If we want to have a talk to, I guess that's okay, but this is this should be a foul for an illegal contact or illegal push in the back right here by this by this defender because defenders cannot push receivers in the back like that. Okay. Next play, another blindside block. We're going to look at um, another a good no call in the backfield. Okay, so we have, if I can slow it down, this player going back towards his own line of scrimmage. I know his line of scrimmage is here, but he's going back towards his own goal line. At the last minute, the guy he blocks turns and sees him, and the blocker ends up taking most of the punishment. So that's uh, you know a, a good no call for a, a legal blindside block because the the person being blocked saw it and actually delivered a bigger blow here. Let's look at the blindside block here. Stop it right here. Look at 16 coming back towards his own goal line. Uh, field judge, this should be, you should be licking your chops. Uh, at this point, line judge, you should be almost pivoting to look up field. And you should also get a good look at the action that's just about to happen at number 32. And I... You know the argument you're going to make that he led with his hands, but his hands were not extended. He does deliver a blow with his shoulder here to knock him down. And, and in situations like that, don't buy him out of a foul because he, he just puts his hands up and he delivers a blow with his chest or his shoulders. I got to see, it's got to be a shoving action or we got to have a pick there. So this is a good call for a blindside block. Next play, um, we're going to look at, you know, away from the ball. And this is just to illustrate um, seeing the whole play. Watch what the wide receiver and what and the defender do. There's contact. They get knocked down. But if the, the headlines and sees the entire play here, it's just innocent and no contact. It's not blindside blocked on either side. And this is the uh, last blindside block. Watch the receiver at the top of the screen come across the middle. And watch what happens. See, watch what the linebacker does. Similar to the play earlier where the, the, the receiver gets pushed in the back. In this case, this is an illegal blindside block. The wide receiver does not see this coming. The linebacker cannot just knock the receiver to the ground like that. Flag should be down for an illegal blindside block. And uh, our keys, this is, a, this is the headlinesman's key. Anytime you, your guy goes over the middle, our antenna should go up. We should be watching because that's where we have, we could have a pick by the wide receiver. But in this case, the, the linebacker is the one who delivers the blow. And uh, a flag should be down right there for an illegal blindside block. All right, next we're going to move to the blocks below the waist. Uh, we got two of these and one chop blocks, and we're done. Uh, we're going to watch the center here, and you get a better view on the end zone view. But uh, if, if I got my rules correctly, uh, you can block below the waist at the snap while the ball's in the zone if you're in the free blocking zone. Free blocking zone ends on the line of scrimmage of the defense. So once the... Uh, you got to, the block has to be in the zone. So watch what the center does. The center goes to the second level here. And again, th this is our, this is center guard, center. I'm sorry, center guard, guard uh, um, is, is the full responsibility of our umpires. So we have a, we have a center that goes to the second level and cuts that linebacker. Once he takes a step up field, He's out of the free blocking zone, and making that block on that linebacker is a foul for an illegal block below the waist. We'll see it better here on the end zone view. We're looking at the center here that's right behind number 14, the quarterback. Goes right into the second level and blocks the, li blocks the linebacker low. So that's a foul for an illegal block below the waist. 
Next one, this one happens in the backfield. So watch uh, this player right here is coming back towards the ball. That one's coming back towards the ball. It's hard to see, but the one goes low. The first one I circled, I think his number is this. I'll circle him again. He goes low and gets that player right below the waist. And as you can see, the referee has a flag down for an illegal block below the waist. So this is good officiating here not watching the ball carrier, watching what happens in front of the ball carrier. Our final play is a chop block, and we won't see it here on the sideline view, but we're going to look at the center and the right guard here. Right here, right here. The center has the low component. The right guard has the high component. Low, high. That's a chop block, okay? Low component by the center. Right there, high component comes over by the the right the right guard. That's enough for a foul for a chop block. And for those who run, you know, they, when we have teams that run the triple options, spend a little bit more time in your pregame umpires mainly talking about chop blocks. Okay, thinking about chop blocks. What's what what's your threshold for a chop block? This one, this one definitely meets the criteria of the low high contact. So. All right, that's it for this film on illegal blocks. Um, a holding one will be separate with plenty of plays for us to go around holding. Thank you for watching.